Welcome back everyone. Today we're gonna to be making an x-ray detector from rock. So if you watched my previous x-ray videos, you know that we used x-ray intensifying screens to capture images. Essentially x-ray detectors by turning the x-rays into visible light, which you can then see. So now I'm gonna be attempting to make my own x-ray intensifying screen, but I'm gonna do it from rock. More specifically, we're gonna be making the scintillating compound cadmium tungstate. So here is our sample of shelite, at least that's how I think you pronounce it, but yeah, I'm gonna call it shelite. Um, it's very dense, this feels like a chunk of metal because I think the density of shelite's like eight grams per cubic centimeter, somewhere around there. So it's very dense. Um, obviously it does have some impurities. The orange, I guess, is probably from iron or something along those lines. Um, but yeah, for the most part, this should contain quite a bit of calcium tungstate. I'm gonna do a quick little density test, just a quick one. Okay, so our sample is 39 grams. Okay, so now we're up to 30 milliliters of water, and let me add it in. Okay, that went up about 5 milliliters. So roughly about 40 grams divided by 5 is 8. So this is, yep, this should be our calcium tungstate. So they didn't lie to me on the uh, listing. Okay, so I'm first going to place a beaker in the hot plate. Well, let's center that, get, you know, better camera footage, my angles aren't the best and we'll add that in there okay now we're gonna add hydrochloric acid and this should react with it to form tungstenic acid which will be insoluble and results in calcium chloride which will be soluble and now it's very yellow there's a lot of tungstenic acid forming that's good that's good but it's not not flaking off the rock, which again kind of uh, scares me a little bit because it might kind of passivate it. And this may take forever to react, but we will see. Okay, simply waiting for this to dissolve is going to take way too long. I'm gonna have to powderize it. So I'm just gonna add it to my mortar and pestle and break it up into a nice fine powder. Okay, here's our now ground up shelite. Completely different color than it was. It's now white. So let's go ahead and turn this into some tungstenic acid. Okay, like before, hot plate on. Okay, now I'm gonna add some hydrochloric acid. Reacting with something in there. Probably other carbonates and other minerals that were in the rock, things of such like that. Well, it's only been like three minutes, but it's starting to turn yellow. And that is our tungstenic acid. You know, this whole time I was calling it tungstenic acid ignore the hair it's uh that's what it looks like when i wake up pretty stylish right pretty stylish anyway i realized i've just been calling it tungstenic acid it's actually tongue stick acid yeah i'm dyslexic okay here's our solution after boiling down nothing really interesting happened it you know is yellow as well tongue stick acid is uh yellow so that's good news um, you can see down in there there is kind of more of an orange substance I think that's kind of partially reacted um, calcium tungstate. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and react this with base to form water soluble sodium tungstate. And then we can go ahead and further react the rest of this. Um, Cause I think we didn't grind it up as good enough and there is some unreacted stuff. Okay, so yeah, nothing really. <laughs> Now to make a sodium hydroxide solution, I'm going to go ahead and add some... I think there was some hydrochloric acid in this beaker. And we're just going to go ahead and dissolve this up into a nice concentrated solution. Okay, now that the sodium hydroxide is dissolved up, let's go ahead and slowly add it to our tungstic acid solution. Okay. Nothing too interesting has happened yet. Let's go ahead and add a bit more. And it is reacting, yep, because it just turned white. Okay, now I'm just gonna add this to a hot plate to get it to fully react. The white precipitate you see is actually calcium hydroxide. I sort of filtered the solution beforehand, but when we reacted the calcium to state with the hydrochloric acid that formed calcium chloride, then addition of the hydroxide is going to precipitate calcium hydroxide and form sodium chloride. Okay, I'm gonna to have to be honest here for a second. I am a complete moron. No, that was not calcium hydroxide precipitating. Well, maybe a little bit, 
but it was calcium state re-precipitating because once it went to basic conditions, it just re-precipitated. So that is my fault for being an idiot. Um, yeah, so the way to fix that is just to filter the solution first and have no calcium ions at all. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna skip ahead all this part because you guys already know what's gonna happen. But I'm just gonna add it all to the same beaker and dissolve it again in hydrochloric acid. Then vacuum filtrate it. That's that's an important step. Edit, gravity filtration. Okay, we should be good now. Um, I washed it multiple times. Here's the wastewater. So yeah, there shouldn't be really any calcium left in there at all. So let's go ahead and add the rest of our sodium hydroxide and see how well this goes. Okay, now that it's dissolved, there again, there's still some unreacted stuff at the bottom, so we'll have to repeat this whole process again. But I'm gonna go ahead and gravity filtrate this to collect our sodium tonate. Okay, after way longer than I would have liked, here is our sodium tungstate solution. Okay, now I'm going to do a pH test. We're gonna to wanna to get this down to neutral pH because when we combine this with our cadmium later on, we don't wanna precipitate cadmium hydroxide or anything like that. So the solution is still fairly basic. So I'm just gonna add vinegar to it, acetic acid, and this will form acetates. And acetates won't precipitate from our solution when we add our cadmium. So it's safe to have acetate ions in solution. Let's go ahead and neutralize this here. Uh, that looks like neutral pH to me right there. No, sorry. Out of the corner, it's over here, but yeah. Okay, voiceover time. I don't know what happened to the audio for this, but anyway, here I am just cutting up some cadmium, and this will be our source of cadmium to make our cadmium tungstate. state. Um, the sample was actually generously donated to me by Backyard Science 2000. I'll have the link to a store down below where you can get a sample just like this one. Okay, here's our two gram chunk of cadmium. We're gonna dissolve this up and form some cadmium nitrate. First, I'm gonna add some distilled water. Now I'm gonna add fuming nitric acid. And this will start dissolving up our cadmium, forming cadmium nitrate. Well, not even <laughs> two minutes later, it's already fully dissolved. Yeah, it was uh, that fast. And there we go, cadmium nitrate solution. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and boil off the nitric acid. That's because obviously we don't want an acidic solution. So I'm going to go ahead, turn the hot plate on, and place that like that. Okay, we now have our two final solutions of cadmium nitrate and our sodium tungstate. Just go ahead and start slowly adding these two together. Okay, I've moved everything to a larger beaker, and now we just have to set it onto a hot plate, and this will cause everything to form and precipitate. Um, as you can see, it is already starting to precipitate white powder. That is our cadmium tungstate. Okay, it's now done reacting. Nothing fancy happened. Uh, it's just a white precipitate. So we'll go ahead and decant off the top layer while it's settled at the bottom, and try to get most of that water off there. There we go, that white goop down there is our product. Okay, now we just gotta boil off the rest of the water. Okay, here's our cadmium tungstate after drying. It's a nice white powder. Now let's test to make sure this is actually calcium, I am not calcium tungstate, cadmium tungstate. Okay, I'm gonna start off with this test tube and add some HCl to it. Now let's take and add some of this to our HCl. Okay, as you see, it is turning yellow, which is a good sign that this is cadmium tungstate because an HCl should revert back to tungstic acid. And there we go, from rock to pure white cadmium tungstate, that's actually really cool. I've never refined something from rock like that. That is, uh, yeah, 
pretty fun. Okay, so let's turn this into an x-ray intensifying screen now. Okay, so as our base, we're gonna use refined linseed oil, and this will actually polymerize and harden. I've used it for my heavy metal paint series, um, but I'm gonna use this to apply it to our screen. So I'm gonna turn this essentially into a paint. All right, here's our newly formed scintillating paint, as I'll call it. Um, and we're gonna apply this to this piece of cardboard and this will be the support for our intensifying screen. Uh, X-rays can pass pretty much straight through cardboard. So that will be a good backing. Okay, now I'm going to stir this up and start applying it. There it is, nice and shiny. Now what we gotta do is let it dry, which may take a couple days. I'll check back on it tomorrow and see how it goes. Okay, our DIY X-ray intensifying screen is done drying. Now all we gotta do is test her out. Hopefully this works. Okay, so here's our X-ray setup. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you kind of already know how this works and what it does. This is just a high voltage power supply also has filament power supplies for x-ray tube here, x-ray tubes in the housing, sealed in with oil and lead shielding. Um, yeah, here's the two high voltage outputs, two filament outputs, milliamp meter, and that's about it. Now to see our x-ray intensifying screen, we have this contraption here, which is just a box taped up with part of a garbage bag. Yeah, I'm not, you, you get the idea, you know, you get the idea about it. Anyway, so in there will go our x-ray intensifying screen. Um, because it does glow very dimly, we are going to do a long exposure along with, you know, take out all the excess light using this. And yeah, so x-ray being there, x-ray intensifying screen will be right there. Camera will be in here. That's where my phone slides in. I record all my videos with my phone, so I won't be able to record the process while I'm taking the photos. But uh, yeah, so phone goes in there. And yeah, it's kind of just that simple. So let's take our x-ray intensifying screen and plop it on in there. I think that will be good right there. So to start off, I'm gonna give it a fairly, you know, short standoff distance because um, the more radiation, the more light is released. So I kind of just want to see this close, how bright it is, and then we can adjust from there. But I think this should make it emit a pretty decent amount of light. Um, and obviously the x-ray beam grows in a cone. So the farther back, the more wide it'll cover the screen. Um, but the closer it is, the more, you know, tighter it will be on the screen. Okay. I I shouldn't have made <laughs> that hand movement with tight. Yeah, no. Man. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and give this a try. I got this little cool thing that I just Bluetooth to my phone and then I can tell it to take a picture. I'm not going to do it because then it's going to stop the video. But um, yeah, so cool little remote thing. So when I remotely turn it on way over there, I can just tell it to take a picture. Let's go. It actually worked. Here's the picture right here. Well, here's some, some beforehand. You can see there's no radiation. Uh, malfunction pixels in it and then that was just my kind of test and then here's the ones afterwards and you can see that dot right there well that circle that's glowing slightly that right there is our x-ray intensifying screen glowing it's very dim compared to an actual x-ray intensifying screen of course that's just because this doesn't have as good of light output as those you know those are specifically made for that they use kind of more exotic things and they're a bit better but you see the crude one does work okay so now it's time to x-ray something because it actually worked <laughs> that is incredible i was i don't know why i was just not expecting it to work i mean there really was no reason why it shouldn't have but yeah i mean it doesn't glow very bright and that's just because it's cadmium type. it's not the best scintillating compound um but yeah so let's go ahead and try to x-ray something it's such a dim glow though. I don't know if we'll really get anything, but yeah, let's do this circuit board first. And to do that, I'm just going to set it up right there in front of the beam. And bada bing, bada boom, we're ready to go. Okay, that came out kind of crappy. It's very hard to see and not clear at all. Okay, so you watched my previous x-ray videos, you know, and one of them I used, well, I x-rayed this little servo. So I'm gonna use this again, 
but it's nice and small we can get the beam really close and uh yeah we'll see if it works <laughs> okay i got it sandwiched in there got this little piece of tape holding it up and let's go ahead and give this a nice test hey okay, that came out decent it came out decent for a diy <laughs> intensifying screen made all the way from rock oh that's awesome well that's it for today's video hope you guys enjoyed and yeah there's a diy x-ray intensifying screen so bye